Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes. I'm Steve Large. We bring you this piece out of our studio and on the road. In fact, we edited this story on this laptop, which is fitting for the story that we're bringing you. It's about Hollywood editing and how big budget movies can now be edited on small laptops like this one. In fact, they could be edited on the road in a hotel room and still make it to a theater near you. It's all in this episode of Behind the Scenes, Hollywood editing. From a fan's perspective, Hollywood hasn't changed a bit over the past decade. The same landmarks, same stars. But what has changed completely is the way Hollywood editors are now creating the blockbusters you watch. Dan Fort is an editor who's worked on movies like Desperado, How Stella Got Her Groove Back, and Stuart Little. He got into the movie editing business in the early 1990s, a revolutionary period in movie editing. I got into editing right at the time when there was this big switch going on to electronic editing. I, uh, I worked on a few films as, uh, as a film assistant, worked on moviolas and cams, you know, did the traditional film editing, and uh, then learned electronic editing right at the very beginning when, when you know, people actually started using it uh, for motion pictures. Moviolas had been the standard in Hollywood since the 1920s. A few changes were made to the machines throughout the years, like the green makeover it was given in the late 1940s, but the function remained the same throughout the 20th century. The process was a fairly simple one. Once the film was exposed, the editor could thread it through the moviola and view it at various speeds. Editors cut and spliced the film together until they were satisfied with a final cut, which was the store that would run in theaters. Then came computers and digital editing. No longer would editors work directly with the film. Now it would be captured into a computer and manipulated with a mouse. No cutting, no splicing, no ruined media, just lots of hard drive space. Well, it was a big jump at that point because uh, also realized that, you know, you could hold film in your hand, you could tear it, you can cut it, you can splice it, you know, you can hold it up against the light and you can see the individual frames. But when it gets into an electronic form, then things get a little bit weird. At the Santa Barbara Film Festival, acclaimed editors Richard Harris and Arthur Schmidt discussed the complexities of editing in Hollywood today. Harris, who won an Oscar for his work on Titanic, remembers the Hollywood transition from film to electronic editing happening virtually overnight. They kept talking about, oh, it'll be another five years or six years. And next thing you know, bam, it happened. It happened really, really quick. Arthur Schmidt, who won an Academy Award for editing Who Framed Roger Rabbit, remembers the transition happening too fast for him. Producers wanted him to edit Adam's Family Values digitally in 1993 on an Avid system. There just wasn't enough time to, to learn the system, so I did Adam's Family Values. The next film that I did was Forrest Gump, and uh, Forrest Gump was the last film that I edited on film. According to Fort, less than 1% of film was edited electronically in 1994. Today, that percentage has flip-flopped, with less than 1% of movies now being edited on film. And that has changed the economics of filmmaking, because digital editing software and digital cameras now sell for a fraction of the price film and motion picture cameras cost. Well, it's kind of funny, because uh, when those systems first came out, I said, you know what's going to happen is that we're eventually going to be editing on laptops. And at that point, you know, everybody was laughing at me, saying, oh, yeah, sure. And we'll all be, like, wearing virtual reality goggles and making up our own movies. But, uh, but in fact, that's what's happened. You know, now with Final Cut Pro and with Cinema Tools, you can actually edit an entire feature on a, on a laptop computer if you want. The impact is that anybody can make a movie now. You know, it's not, it's not the money that's holding you back. It's like, you got an idea, go ahead and do it. So really, it's only limited by creativity. And you know, there'll be a lot of crummy movies going out there. There've always been a lot of crummy movies going out there, and there'll be a few gems too. Schmidt and Harris have slightly opposing views on how the editing evolution will proceed. Uh, I don't see myself editing Forrest Gump 2 on a, on a laptop in a coffee shop. I like going to work and being in the proper environment. I have I actually picture uh, the film part of it going away eventually, that the movies will come from satellites, They're, you know? I don't know why not. I don't know why not. What's the next step right 
Francis Ford Coppola once said that editing is like taking a dictionary and then cutting up all the words and putting them back together to make a novel. I think it's safe to say that digital editing at least avoids all those paper cuts you might get. It's a lot less messy. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Behind the Scenes. I hope you enjoyed the show and learned a little something. For everybody here at RCOM TV, I'm Steve Large. Thanks for watching.